welcome to Commission Ed, the Air Force Officer Podcast. Here we explore the training and development of America's leaders in the application of air power and the profession of arms. The views expressed are those of the hosts and do not reflect the official policy or position of the United States Air Force, Department of Defense, or the U.S. government. The mention of companies by name is solely for the purpose of discussion and should not be implied as endorsement. Welcome back to another episode of Commission Ed, the Air Force Officer Podcast. I'm Colin Slade. And I'm Reed Gann, and we're your hosts for Commission Ed. So Colin, uh, this is it. This is the final episode of Commission Ed. Yeah, like the final. The final, final, final. And unlike Frodo Baggins, who on his 111st birthday just <laughs> disappeared, um, we actually have come back post-anniversary to give you our reasons why and to share with you some of our favorite moments and discuss, again, like, why such a big change. Yeah. There are three critical components when deciding how and when and who to deliver content. Yeah. And those are voices, a topic slash audience, and then timing. Mm -hmm. Those are the three key elements. So voices, who is sharing the content? That's you and I, right, Colin. We are the voices, along with all our guests that we bring on, of the content. And we have changed. Yes. <laughs> we started as mid to senior level company grade officers. Yep, captains. And we have moved into the field grade officer world and that is no small thing. Mm -hmm. it, it was a bigger shift than I anticipated. And as you and I have learned and grown and honestly become more physically separated from the core identity of what our podcast is about, right? Officer Training School, ROTC, becoming an officer, we now have genuine doubts about our ability to be the correct voices for the core mission of what we're trying to share. Right. Yeah. When we started this podcast, I was still an Air Force ROTC instructor. You had just left being an instructor for officer training school. We are now three years removed for you, two years removed for me. And though the programs don't necessarily change that much, they change enough in that amount of time to where we don't feel comfortable to speak expertly on those programs anymore. Yeah. Much less something like going to the Air Force Academy, which neither of us have ever done. Yeah. And not only that, our connections to that place have started to drop off, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it was pretty straightforward to call somebody up at OTS back in the day. It was easy because I knew all of them. Right. Well, none of them are there anymore. Because <laughs> <laughs> they've moved on too. Yeah. So and that's just the natural course of things. It is. And so when we look at the first component of those three components, voices, we have some real doubts about us being the correct voice. Yeah. The next is the topic or the audience. Now, this has not changed. No. This is the one thing, Colin, you got 100% correct that there was an audience out there for this content. Nailed it. You, yeah. <laughs> you are absolutely correct. And we mentioned this in our previous episode. If anything, it's still growing and it's unbelievable. There are people out there who want this information. And so that's the only reason it's been successful. Mm -hmm. well, we'll, 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 okay, without that, without a demand, Colin, this thing would have fallen on its face in the first year. Yeah, but the only reason? Uh, the most important reason. Okay, I'll give you that. Okay. I don't know if it was the only reason. That's fair. Yeah, you know, as far removed as we are from the commissioning sources, that doesn't mean that we can't speak intelligently on officership and have these conversations with folks in the different career fields. We can still do that. But I agree with you that definitely the topic and the audience is the most important aspect of our success. Yeah. So uh, that has not changed in anything at all. Again, if, if anything, it's even increased. So one maybe two totally working but three is timing and this one really connects up to the first point yeah the worlds are different the field grade officer world is different and 
in year one and in year two, we talked about this at both of those reviews, how we had pretty quickly eclipsed our individual knowledge of what we were contributing to the podcast. Mm -hmm. And it had turned into an exercise for our development. Yeah. The problem has become that we are not, and, and this sounds so selfish, but we have to own it. <laughs> we are not getting out of it as much as we used to be. Right. And so we, in order for our growth and development, we are starting to look at other things yeah. and needing to put our time and attention there. And that is that is one of the reasons that this is such a hard call is because we I feel selfish saying that. But I also have to balance my personal growth. Colin, we talk about how important it is, but yet I might be taking steps to inhibit mine. And it's that has been a really hard thing to be able to say out loud. But so important that you make the effort to say it out loud, to have the conversation, to do the self-assessment, to realize that there is a need that is not being met by this podcast. It may be meeting the needs of hundreds and thousands of others, which is great. We're so glad that everybody is listening to the conversation that we're having. But if your personal need is not being met, then how will it be? And I feel the same way. We've had many conversations over the last year about our personal development and how the podcast is not doing it for us. So what are we doing? Yeah. What books are we reading? What other content are we consuming to try and address that need? Well, and Colin, you and I, we talked about this a little bit last episode where we couldn't give up the podcast. We're like, well, what should the podcast be about? Let's totally change it and let's do it about something else so that we could get personal growth. And, and But it just, it got away from our audience, mm -hmm. right? That core topic. It's like, well, wait a minute. That's like the pillar. <laughs> yeah. That's the foundation of why this is all working. We just could not find a way to get all of those three things together again and continue another step. It just, we couldn't, the pieces didn't fit anymore because they had changed. Yeah. So much has changed. And we talked about this in the previous episode about the numbers, obviously YouTube. That's where the the eyeballs are. That's where the attention is. That's where the, the audience is. Our audience that is that critical element of our success is on YouTube. Thanks to everybody who's listening through all of the podcast platforms. You are part of that audience, but there are more of you, many, many more of you out on YouTube. And in order to make that successful, we would need to play into the YouTube algorithm, which favors highly engaging videos with faces, like not just audio, you and me talking to each other with a static thumbnail, but actual faces and high quality B-roll, you know, taken on location and we, we just do not have the capacity to make that thing successful. Continuing to grow the podcast and create that kind of content is incredibly resource intensive. If we were going to do that, we would need to hire a team. We would need additional hours in the day. The podcast would need to pay for itself. And let's be honest, you know, for many reasons, some of which we're going to get into, that's not possible. Yeah. And... How many lawyers have we talked to, Colin? <laughs> I, I'm dead serious. The numbers approaching, it's not quite double digits, but it's getting close. Yeah. Each of us. Every time we move locations, we need to talk to our owning parent organization, tell them what we're doing, yep. explain everything. They have to go up to their higher headquarters and it goes from there and emails and interviews and blah, blah, blah. It just, it keeps going. No matter how we break it, Colin, We've gotten the feedback the same every time. Yeah. We, the podcast, cannot generate any sort of money. Right. In any form. And whether that's selling merch from logos, it doesn't matter. It can't make money. And as a result, we can't use money generated from our work in order to pay for producing it. So right. it's a net negative end of discussion. That's the rules. And it will always be that way until the laws change. Let's talk about what some of those laws are, because that's what we do, right? Mm -hmm. We talk to you, the audience, in specifics about the policies, the laws. We give you the actual references so that you know that we're not just making this stuff up. We like to be pedantic because that's 
what you expect from us at this point, right? Mm -hmm. So first law that comes up here from 5 CFR section 2635.101 paragraph B7. Okay, it's really deep in there, but it's important. It says, employees of the federal government shall not use public office for private gain, period, and dot. Yeah, and they all came back to that one thing. Yeah. Like, well, you know, you could all tie it back to this one thing. And it's like, well, that's a pretty clear sentence. That is that one thing that you and I hold public office. We are officers of a public institution, the United States Air Force. We cannot use that position as majors, as officers for our private gain. And even if we're using that money, that private gain to continue to do the Air Force's mission of mentoring the future generation of providing this information, which is part of our official duties. We can't take money to continue to do it. She can't do it. Yeah. The next one, Joint Ethics Regulation, paragraph 5 slash 409. The DOD employees shall not knowingly solicit or make solicited sales to DOD personnel who are junior in rank, grade, or position, or to the family members of such personnel on or off duty. So translation, we can't advertise a shirt and have a spouse of an E4 purchase it. Yep. That would be illegal. Yep. Well, exactly. Who are we selling t-shirts to, Colin? <laughs> if it's not, <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? Like it's not to general officers. Yeah. So our audience is very narrow relative to the population of the United States. Right? We're not selling iPhones here which just about every thinking person above the age of probably way too young can own, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we're already limiting it to generally people in the military or people interested in joining. And Colin, as O4s, the overwhelming majority of those people are lower in grade. Yeah. What, 95, 96, maybe even more percent than that yeah. are lower in grade than us. It would have to be lieutenant colonels, colonels, one, two, three, or four star generals. That's it. <laughs> and they don't listen to our show. So and, yeah. And I'm I, <laughs> and and even if they are listening, thank you, gentlemen and ladies. We appreciate you. But they're not gonna buy enough shirts. <laughs> yeah, to keep the wheels on the bus. <laughs> but going back to the previous one, we can't use that money for private gain anyway. Yeah. So okay. Last uh, yeah. yeah. Last one. DOD instruction fifty four hundred point one seven paragraph eight dot D. Do not accept compensation for any activity relating to one's status as a DOD civilian employee or military service member. DOD personnel are prohibited from using their official position or public office for personal financial gain or the endorsement of any product, service, or enterprise. And this is interesting because the only reason we have knowledge about what we're talking about is because of our public office. Yep. So the only way this works is if we are like, completely out of the military, like 100% out. Yep. Like not even inactive, ready, reserve, out, out, out. Correct. And we know some of our fellow podcasters who did not even start a podcast until that was the case in order to kind of steer clear of some of these things. Mm -hmm. But that's not where we are. Colin, you're more in now than you were a year ago. I know, right? <laughs> Which is great. I'm glad. <laughs> but makes this hard. You know, we did explore that too. He's like, well, you're a reservist. Does that mean, you know, when you're on orders, it works? And when you're not, it doesn't like we tried. We really did. Yeah. Well, the previous one just said whether you are on or off duty, it doesn't make any difference. And the one before that said, you can't do it. <laughs> Period. <laughs> Period. Yeah. And dot. Yeah. So in order to continue, as we said, we would need to have the podcast pay for itself and it can't. It just can't. We could continue with the status quo. We could just continue to record long form episodes as we have been, or we could decrease the amount. You know, we could make shorter episodes. Uh, we could decrease the frequency even further, maybe go to once a month or every other month, but we don't want to. Yeah. It would lose what it was. Mm -hmm. And it's what it was, which was working. Yeah, man, there are not enough actual nouns in there. I, I, should, I should make a better sentence. <laughs> I meant what you knew. I know. It would change the podcast sufficiently to be different enough. It wouldn't be what it 
was I'm back in the same place. This is challenging, folks. We are having a hard time going through our last episode, kind of getting all the feels. All right. Perfect time to transition to our favorite moments, because if we already didn't have all the feels, uh, they're certainly going to come out. So I will start, Colin. Some of the most rewarding experiences I've had doing the podcast have been interviewing my friends, personal people that I have interacted with, that I have respected, that I stay in touch with, that volunteered their time to share something that they had with us. And I was going to write a little list, but I was certain that I'd forget somebody. And I just decided to say all of those people that I had a relationship with before and separate from the podcast, but you decided to come join us, that meant something to me. And I really am grateful for those experiences. Another episode that was a favorite of mine is the September 11th memorial that I did a few years back. Mm -hmm. My family doesn't listen to the podcast, Colin. I'll just own it. Um, <laughs> again, narrow audience, right? Yeah. They listened to that episode. And many of them have commented how meaningful that was to them. That was a seminal moment in our history collectively. And they appreciated that. And, and so that one... And the audience didn't care, which is funny, but yeah. <laughs> I cared. Um, that one is a, definitely a favorite of mine. Two more. These are the ones that I felt I learned the most. The episode we did on protecting freedom while giving up our own. You and I wrote on that one for a long time. Yeah. And I feel that that one has fundamentally shifted the way I think about even the way our country is organized. And so I learned a lot with that one. And the one that I was the most humbling was the one um, from our flight nurse. Yeah. That was the one that I was like, okay, I guess medical people need to be officers. <laughs> that one, I had to eat a lot of crow on. That was the most humbling. Um, hearing her describe the necessity of her authority being able to give legal, lawful standing orders to air crew, to patients and others is where I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, fine. Medical, you can be officers too. <laughs> but yeah, that was, so those are kind of my favorite big memories from our time doing the podcast. Yeah, a lot of goodness there. Similar to your separate September 11th episode, the one I did about my experience doing a military funeral for a senior airman, Brian Bell. That was extremely poignant for me. And in creating that episode, I actually got connected to Brian's father. Robert Bell. And it was special to share that with him and know that there are many, not just within his family and the immediate friends, but many people who remember Brian or affected by him. And we will continue to remember Brian by it. That was a special moment for sure. You mentioned all of the interviews. I have no idea how many interviews we've done for this podcast. It's a lot. <laughs> And like you said, many of them with our personal friends, but also many who we had never met before. Yeah, until literally we're sitting down to do the interview. <laughs> right. Uh, and one of those in particular sticks out in my mind with uh, Major Michael Burns about being an RPA pilot. I very distinctly remember listening to him talk and just feeling like so much gratitude for the amazing people that we get to serve with. I'm so glad he is on our side. That 50 pound brain is working for us and not for the enemy. I'm just floored by the good people who choose to take their talents, their capabilities and use them on behalf of the Air Force and the American people. He's the one who asked rhetorically kind of to himself, but really to the audience, do you love aircraft or do you love air power? And it's okay to love aircraft, but you better love air power if you're going to be in the Air Force. Right. Yeah, that was a heavy moment. It's so good. I am so, so proud of the thought work that you and I put into what it means to be an officer and what we would like to see of the officer corps. You know, if we had the opportunity to make those decisions, if we were kings for a day kind of thing, we put that series together. And I'm really proud of that one, not because any of it is ever going to come about. You know, it would be great if it did. But just helping me to understand the kind of officer that I personally want to be, and then in the development of junior officers as part of my responsibilities, how I am going to go about it, that was really helpful. And then lastly, mentioned previously that we mentioned in the last episode how we were finally able to interview a general officer. Well, so that was one of my former commanders, amazing human being, 
Colonel Mike Zulsdorf at the time, now Brigadier General. We got a general. We'd check that box. <laughs> Not that that's necessarily a, a feather that we need to stick into our caps, but it was just wonderful to reconnect with him. And on such an important topic, one of my personal favorite episodes that we've ever done, The Foundation of Character. That was a rebroadcast. I loved learning again from Mike Zulsdorf about character, and he expanded my knowledge on it leaning into the gray and having that anchor of character, but not letting it to hamstring you into your decision-making. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome stuff. There have been so many. Those are the ones that really stick out for the two of us. But I couldn't leave this segment without saying, Colin, my opportunity to spend many, many hours with you has also been a highlight. So thank you for coming up with this crazy idea (laughs) and just all the work and time and energy put into it. It's been a real treasure, so much so that you and I have actually committed to schedule time together. Yeah. So as regular check-ins with our goals for next year. So last week we reviewed our year two goals. Well, this is where we're going to introduce our year Year four. Year four. (laughs) Yeah. But they're about what we are doing, what we are doing in our personal and professional lives as we move forward into the future because it's time. Yeah, it is. We're going to schedule a regular check-in so that we can continue to grow and continue to interact together. Colin, for me, remember that thing I mentioned last week about writing a paper? Mm -hmm. I am not naive enough to think that anything I could ever write would make a difference. But if I have a shot, it's going to be in writing a journal article. Yeah, It's going to be in publishing a paper and getting it into the hands of the people who are reading those things. And so that has been something I've been really focused on. And I've been doing research. I've teamed up with some pretty high power brains that have done this kind of thing in the past. I interacted with others who have said, it's time to find your voice. And that voice is heard through the written word. And so that's what I've been doing. And so I've geared up. I'm going to focus on information warfare. That is my trade. That is my profession. I am part of the information operations line of the Air Force. This is who I am when it comes to this profession of mine. And so that's what I'm going to be writing about. And hopefully that'll even springboard me into my intermediate developmental education at NIU. Wouldn't it be great if I could take something that I did on my spare time and help me with education and vice versa? Yeah. So that is what I am focused on. And before I leave it, it was a fascinating experience to be in and around the White House when major world events were occurring and watching what was happening on the unclass side versus what's just happening on the classified side, which versus what was happening in highly politicized spheres and inside American homes. Information warfare is something we've got to get right. And I think as a nation, we got to get better. So that's what I'm going to be focused on. Yeah. So you're going to be doing that sometime in this next year. Yeah. Um, Goals. Looking forward to it before September of 2023. It's going to be before IPCS even. So we're talking June, July. I need something on paper in the hands of people. Because after I move, I'm going to be a student and I'm just not sure how much time I'm going to have to do other things. Right. Well, definitely looking forward to that. I'm sure the audience as well. If that is something that you members of the audience are interested in reading, once Reed finishes that writing, let us know. And uh, we'll uh, put you on the, the mailing list, I guess, to share it with you. So similar to you, Reed, I feel like the time has come for me to find my voice through the written word. Uh, I have actually started writing a book. I don't have a title yet, but... I do have a topic, you know, doesn't really make sense to start writing a book without a topic, but here's a sneak peek for you. It's going to be about, I'll call it a leadership book or I guess anti-leadership book. I don't know. Uh, (laughs) I've over the last year done a lot of reading, thinking, mulling over this idea of leadership. And I, I think that it doesn't exist. And I want to share that thought with the world. (laughs) The book is going to explore the idea of the human domain, how to map it, navigate in it, fight within it, just as you would any other domain. And maybe this is similar to what you're doing with information warfare. We'll see what it turns into. I do intend to eventually create more content, um, maybe another podcast. 
YouTube channel. I don't know. Now that I've developed this skill through the creation of this podcast and YouTube channel, it seems like folly to let it go waste. And so we'll see what that turns into in the future. But for the immediate future, I am going to be writing this book. And I look forward to our regular check-ins, Colin, so I can debate you on this idea of leadership not existing. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, it's funny how we've changed in just these few short years. I agree. I have this nice microphone. I have these headphones. I have this, you know, this setup. And it'd be a shame to let it go to waste. And I'm also thinking about how to do that, but in other forms, completely outside of the Air Force, probably helping my wife with her business and some other things like that. But um, yeah. So Colin, typically with our episodes, especially our interviews, we end the episode asking the question, what does it mean to be an officer? And you have something typed here. It's very nice. And I'll even let you say it. (laughs) Thanks. But I don't know that I want to give an answer because I'm still trying to figure it out. I think you have an answer, but you are allowing yourself room to have that answer continually be updated. Yeah. I think that's fair. You know, we did the episode about like how to know when to stop being an officer. We've mentioned that one a few times. Mm -hmm. I've gained knowledge since we did that, that is added to my list of, you know, like career goals and when I know it's time to leave and things like that. My list has grown. Yeah. It was static at that one point and it's already changed. And so, yeah, part of me is hesitant to actually put something down because it'll be outdated here in two or three weeks. Almost sure you know, at, the, at the rate that we're going, but I don't know. I'll leave it up to you. Do you want to, cause I think this is really good. There's some really good things in here. Do you want to leave this as a marker in the sand? You know, uh, at this point in time, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. I think that you're spot on in that we can arrive at an answer, but we must not accept it as the answer. We must leave ourselves open for continual updates. And so with that in mind, I'd like to share my personal definition of what it means to be an officer. An officer is someone who, by their character, competence, and connection with others, has earned their special trust and confidence, influences them to accomplish noble deeds that they would not or could not on their own, attracts the uncommitted, and undermines the determination and capabilities of their adversaries good, man. It's really good. There's a lot in there, and I look forward to exploring it further with you, with our audience, with other members of the Air Force or other interested parties, but not in this podcast. Yeah, that will do it for this week's episode of Commission Ed. And we want to give our most sincere and deepest appreciation to any and all who have ever tuned in on any forum ever with us. So thank you for listening to this and any other episode of Commission Ed.